At the molecular level, one of the most important processes to understand in biology is the process known as protein synthesis. This is how you take the instructions that are written in the DNA of your nucleus, copy those instructions into a temporary form, then send them out to the rest of the cell for the ribosomes to construct the proteins that carry out all the commands of the nucleus. It's by understanding this process that scientists are delving into some fascinating realms. We're learning how to do things like have bacteria build medicines for us. This is amazing stuff, so it's pretty cool to learn about. It's actually not that hard. It's a two-step process. Like I said, you have to copy the instructions, and that's a process known as transcription. This is how you open up a section of your DNA and build a messenger RNA copy of that one gene. It's very easy sometimes to confuse transcription and replication, which is the copying of the entire molecule of DNA. DNA replication is only done once in a cell's life, and that's shortly before cell division, while transcription is being done all the time in order to carry out all the functions that the cell needs to do. And I think of it as making a transcript, which is a written copy of, say, a TV show that you watch. It's where they write down everything that somebody said. That's different from translation, which also begins with a T, but it means a very different thing. If I watch a translation of a show, if I ask for a translation of a show, I'm not going to stay in the same language. Remember, transcription, you're going from DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid, to RNA, ribonucleic acid. It's in the same, you can think of it as language um, in chemical form. Here, I'm going from one language, the RNA transcript that just came out of the nucleus, and I'm using it to build an amino acid sequence, which is a completely different kind of chemical. So translation is where the ribosomes use the instructions that were copied into that messenger RNA, and they guide a ribosome in how to, or which amino acids to join uh, one after the other to build an entire protein. So let's take a quick look at this YouTube video. And we're going to uh, take a look at how this process works. I'll go ahead and maximize it. And what we're going to see here is inside the nucleus, we have the DNA. And we can see an enzyme going along the DNA, hunting for the gene, using a promoter, which is a sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's on the DNA, to guide the enzyme and tell it where the gene is and which strand to copy. It's found the promoter. Now it knows where the gene is. So it unwinds the double helix. And now it'll start copying just one side. That's, again, different from DNA replication. And it's binding RNA nucleotides. Wherever there's an A, it puts U, because it's RNA. Wherever there's a C, it puts a G. Wherever there's a G, it puts a C. Wherever there's a T, it puts an A, and so on and so forth. So it's going along, and it's copying one strand of the DNA in RNA form. Now, this video is going to have the RNA start to leave and go straight to the ribosome. In eukaryotes, creatures like you and me with a nucleus, when the RNA leaves, it often gets edited. Um, just to get rid of some uh, information that's not needed and to make some modifications that are necessary. But the RNA leaves, goes out into the cytoplasm, where it will encounter the two parts that make up a ribosome. First, it's going to encounter the smaller half or small subunit of a ribosome. And that's what we see here. And this smaller half of the ribosome helps hold the RNA so it can easily be read. Now that it's been found, we need a couple of other things. We need the large subunit of the ribosome, which is larger, and we need tRNA. This is transfer RNA that carries the amino acids to the ribosome and helps using its anti-codon matches up to the three nucleotide groups that are in RNA called codons. Now that we have the first tRNA on the what's known as start codon, the large subunit connects. Now we have a fully assembled ribosome with the R messenger RNA and tRNA. And we're ready for the next tRNA to come in. And that's what we see. It enters in through a location called the A site and it docks its anti-codon to the codon of the messenger RNA. Now, these weird little geometric shapes are some graphic artist knowledge or idea of what an amino acid is. That bizarre alien thing that came in, that was an enzyme that joined those two amino acids together, breaking it from this tRNA. Once that tRNA is done delivering its amino acid, it goes away to some other part of the cell to pick up a new amino acid so it can deliver the next one if needed. Whatever is the next codon, the appropriate tRNA comes in, bringing with it its amino acid. It matches up its codon following the same basic base pairing rules. It allows the enzyme to attach the amino acids together, and that's what's going on. tRNAs drop off amino acids, ribosome puts them together, and the growing amino acid chain, or protein, starts to come out of the ribosome. When ultimately it reaches what's known as a stop codon, the ribosome stops, the two halves fall apart, the protein chain is released, and the messenger RNA floats away, perhaps to be read by some other ribosome. 
And here you can see your cells are full of ribosomes doing this protein synthesis process all the time. That's protein synthesis.